Welcome to one of the new video podcasts on the iCodeWrite Community Center. This is Dr. John Warren and I'll be talking to you today about wired versus wireless networking. First I want to compare the two types of network. A wired network is one in which each computer has a hard wire or a, a physical cable connection back to the hub or the switch in the network. The hub or switch is connected to the router uh, which which may be uh, one device or maybe multiple devices and I'll cover that in just a moment which is then connected to the broadband internet connection uh, and actually gets you on the internet. Now, wireless uh, network is a little bit different, and the computers don't have a hardwired connection between the computer and the hub. Everything is done over the air, which makes things a little more portable and able to change locations and things. Um, you can use a wireless access point, or you can use a, a combination of wireless hub router, uh, those sort of things. But then you have a hard connection from there to the, the broadband connection out into the internet. So I'm going to go over each of these configurations. This is a schematic of a wired internet connection. You can see the solid white lines indicate that we've got what's called an RJ45, which is the type of wiring that's used to connect uh, computers to things. You can see in the center we have the switch, which really think of that as kind of the traffic cop that lets all the computers talk to each other through their connections. It's kind of a star sort of uh, connect connectivity or shape to things. The switch is then connected to the router, which is then connected to the internet. Um, the switch and, and router can also become one device. If you have a combination switch router, you just skip one step of what you're going through. Uh, a lot of times with the switch router combinations only will handle four or eight computers at a time. So for larger networks, this usually isn't the desired configuration. Now in a wireless scheme, you can see the, the magenta dotted lines represent a wireless connection, not a hard wire, but things being connected via radio signals to the wireless switch router which then has a hardware connection to the internet. You may also have just an access point which would connect these these devices up together which would be this sort of configuration where things are wireless to the to the wireless access point which is then hardwired to the switch router and then that's connected to the internet. There are lots of different permutations you can have with these um, and a lot of the a lot of the the choices that you make will be te depend on the number of computers on your network. So what are the benefits of the different types? Well, the wired wired uh, tends to be the least expensive of the two. The hardware hardware is a little bit less expensive. <clears throat> Most desktops and just about all the laptops, uh, other than the, the MacBook Air, which is getting lots of press right now, does not have uh, an Ethernet adapter included in it, just wireless only. The switch routers are a little bit less expensive and can handle larger numbers of computers uh, in a wired configuration. So you do save a little bit a little bit of money there. <clears throat> They're also a little bit more secure. You don't have your information going across the public airwaves. So you don't have to worry about people hacking into your system uh, through the wireless. I don't find that to be a huge concern with wireless, but it is certainly available. And it's a little easier to troubleshoot. If you have trouble with computer one connecting to computer two, you can take a, you, you can pretty much expect it's a software a configuration issue. It's probably not the wireless connection not being connected. You know, there are some limitations to wired networks, so you have to have physical uh, connections, meaning if you're in an older building, you've been in for a while that wasn't wired for computers, you're going to have to run hardwire connections from, from in each computer's workstation back to the hub router. It makes it a little more difficult to move things from one room to the other or around in a room. If you, you know, put drop one wire one wired connection in each room and find out you need to be on the other in the opposite corner of the room for your connection, that causes you some some difficulties. And you can have some computer spaghetti, meaning you've got one more cable running to each computer, plus the area that has all these connections, the hub router and switch, you want to have in an area that's away from public, public eyes, not so much because people will cause problems with it, but it can get kind of tangled and messy looking. Now the benefits of a wireless network is it's very easy to place and design the network. As long as you don't have too many thick concrete and steel walls between the wireless access point and your computer, you're going to have a connection. You don't have to get in the ceiling and run cables and do those sort of things. It allows for portable solutions. You could use a tablet PC to move throughout the office for data entry or data retrieval. Or you could just have notebook computers placed where you find you really want them. You don't need to run cabling, just power to the computers that you're going to use. It avoids you having to crawl into the ceiling or down under, under the floor or tear up the floor and do things. So there are certainly some benefits to wireless networking over wired. As I alluded to earlier, there's a potential for a loss of security. You need to, you need to be using wireless security protocols, and the, most, the newer ones are called WAP, um, which gives you, you know, the, the best security that you're going to find. People aren't going to crack into your network if you set a password and use this protocol unless they want to spend some serious time and effort to do so. I doubt very much that most of us in our offices will, will have someone who wants our data that bad to get a Cray supercomputer and work on those things. 
Wireless is also not quite as, quite as fast. There are some new networking protocols that uh, get you up to about 50 megabytes per second for the potential transfer speed compared to 1,000 megabytes per second or a gigabyte um, for, um, uh, for speed. So it's not quite as fast, but for most of the applications that we're going to use in our offices, this isn't a big issue other than moving large video or, or image files. Then it certainly does make a, make a difference. And as far as troubleshooting, there's one other layer that you have to deal with as far as troubleshooting to make sure everything's working. And it is a little bit more expensive than wired networking, but I don't find that to be a huge differentiator when you look at the time required to run hardwire connections and those sort of things. So the cost this may be a little bit higher, but it's not dramatically so. You can use a hybrid network, which has wired and wireless uh, networking components together. I use this in my office. Um, and it really allows you to take the advantage of best of both worlds. In those situations where you just can't get a hardwired connection run in, you can still have a computer where you want it. And in the rooms that you're configuring and setting up, you can drop hardwires to where you want to and have the fastest speeds, the most security, and the least, the least troubles or headaches. This is an example of a hybrid scheme. And typically, it is a, the laptop on the lower left that's got the dash magenta line where you'll see that you have um, a wireless connection. It's usually an, an ancillary computer that's, that's on there, but you know there are lots of reasons to go this route. So I hope you've seen that there are a lot of different solutions for your networking. There's really not one that works best for everyone, but for most people it tends to uh, allow us a lot of flexibility and a, a way to make our offices work well. I hope you found the podcast to be interesting and stop by for more. Just make sure that you make the right choice, and remember that even if you make the wrong choice, you can almost always undo these things. Thanks, and have a great day.